Hi, this is Ed Driscoll. Welcome to Silicon Graffiti. In our last edition of Silicon Graffiti, we looked at how 19th century progressivism and its more malignant offshoots were examples of starting from zero, attempting to discard thousands of years of history, shake up the etch-a-sketch of civilization, and reboot mankind. What could go wrong? Well, other than the Soviet Union, World War II, the Cold War, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, Castro's Cuba, and the tens of millions killed by communist China, of course. Which is why, after the Soviet Union fell and President Reagan and Paul Volcker jump-started the American economy in the 1980s, communism and socialism were looking rather discredited by the time the early 1990s rolled around. But what could be done to control the masses? Well, there was always environmentalism. As with most bad things these days, it took off in the 1960s, a few years after Rachel Carson wrote Silent Spring, which led in the early 1970s to the banning of DDT. By the late 1970s, next on the list of things to be taken away was nuclear power. Private ownership of firearms was looking awfully shaky back then as well. Along the way, liberalism, which always prided itself on a certain jaunty coolness, whether it was FDR and his cigarette holder, or the swankiness of John and Jackie Kennedy, began to look a little, well, wild-eyed and just plain nuts. As Fred Siegel wrote in the summer of 2010 in City Journal magazine, in an article called Progressives Against Progress, the rise of environmentalism poisoned liberals' historical optimism. Quote, Crankery, in short, became respectable. In 1972, Sir John Maddox, editor of the British journal Nature, noted that though it had once been usual to see maniacs wearing sandwich boards that proclaimed the imminent end of the earth, they had been replaced by a growing number of frenzied activists and politicized scientists making precisely the same claim. In the years since, liberalism has seen recurring waves of such end-of-days hysteria. These waves have shared not only a common pattern, but often the same cast of characters. Strangely, the promised despoilizations are most likely to be presented as imminent when Republicans are in the White House. In each case, liberals have argued that the threat of catastrophe can be averted only through drastic actions by which the ordinary political mechanisms of democracy are suspended and power is turned over to a body of experts and supermen." Unquote. And along the way, the same self-described liberals who swear that their mottos are pro-choice and diversity began, as Hillary Clinton said in 2004, to take things away from you, from what liberals defined, entirely arbitrarily, as the common good. By the end of the past decade, just about everything that was fun was under attack from various left-wing factions. And believe me, this is far from a complete list. And of course, not coincidentally, as the British website numberwatch.co.uk has noted, everything has been claimed to cause global warming. And believe me, this is also very much an incomplete list. In 2010, American Express ran the following commercial on primetime TV. And I'm a damn buster. We've been working for years to take this dam out. The reservoir behind it is only four feet deep. The water gets real warm, kills a lot of the life in the river. When you take out a dam, that's a real victory. I mean, a concrete victory, so to speak. To do good, you actually have to do something. No matter what you want to do, Members Project from American Express can help you take the first step. Vote, volunteer, or donate at TakePart.com. And while American Express is promoting the destruction of existing dams, the Obama administration is promising that no more will be built. Or as Joel Kotkin noted at Politico.com in November, quote, When FDR commissioned projects such as the Tennessee Valley Authority, he'd literally brought light to darkened regions. The loyalty created by FDR and Truman built a base of support for liberalism that lasted for nearly half a century. Today's liberals don't show enthusiasm for airports or dams or anything that may kick up some dirt. Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Interior Deanna Archuleta, for example, promised a Las Vegas audience, quote, you will never see another federal dam, unquote. And of course, hey, 
It's not like there's any pressure to conform to any of the left's environmental edicts, needless to say. Kids, just before you go, there's a brilliant idea in the air that I'd like to run by you. Now, it's called 1010. The idea is everyone starts cutting their carbon emissions by 10%. Well, like getting your dad to insulate the loft, or taking your next holiday by train instead of flying, or buying energy-saving light bulbs. Now, no pressure at all, but it'd be great to get a sense of how many of you might do this. Just a rough percentage. That's fantastic! And those not? Philip and Tracy. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Your own choice. OK, class, thank you so much for today, and I will see you all tomorrow. Oh! Just before you go, I just need to press this little button here. Now, everybody, please remember to read chapters five and six on volcanoes and glaciation. Except for Philip and Tracy, of course. So, where does it all end? Presumably, the ruling class left will keep their mansions, private planes, and technology. As for the rest of us? Well, ultimately, that's up to you. How much are you prepared to fight forced reprimativization? Because otherwise, as unabashed communist Pete Seeger was once quoted by the New York Times, quote, I like to say that I'm more conservative than Barry Goldwater. He just wanted to turn the clock back to when there was no income tax. I want to turn the clock back to when people lived in small villages and took care of each other, unquote. Back to zero, in other words. For Silicon Graffiti, I'm Ed Driscoll.